with the yo-ho-ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Good to see you at Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Brawl Adventure Mode, the subspace emissary, very hard, 100% run, part 14. In the last video, the ice climbers fell off a glacier, but as you can see, they did not die. In fact, they landed on their feet without breaking a single limb. But now they're being confronted by lots of enemies and Marth slashes one to the ground. But instead of getting to use Ike, Pokemon Trainer, Lucas, and Marth, instead we have to use this overused bunch. We get to choose between Mario, Pit, Link, Yoshi, and Kirby again. I've given Mario enough screen time in this Let's Play, so I'm gonna go with these four, starting with Pit. So, we're jumping into, as you would expect, a very big ambush, starting with Primids. All of the primids in the world, well not quite, but certainly lots of primids and boom primids and they all, they all just jump straight down the canyon so that was easy enough. This stage is appropriately called the canyon because of the very prominent canyon and they're all falling down. Pit, don't do the same thing Pit. Uh, uh, pit, don't fall down the pit. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, canyons. They have so many cool words to describe them. Literally, my two favourite words in the English language, both are names for holes in the ground. My second favourite word is crevasse, and my favourite word is chasm. And they both describe holes in the ground, and then you've also got words like fissure, which is cool, and precipice describes the an edge of something, which is a word I also like. And then you've got words like canyon and even pits, fairly cool. How, how, why do all these holes in the ground get all the best words in the world? So, while there are lots of enemies in this ambush, it's not entirely challenging because, as I've demonstrated, enemies do tend to just drop down the canyon in the middle. And there's a lot of the enemies are gliers, which will just casually walk off the side of the area and take themselves out for you. There will be some more challenging enemies towards the end, like this Puppet, Arnite, and Rotorit, as well as four big primids that are about to spawn. But it's fairly easy to con uh, when you consider that this ambush takes up the entire stage. That's right, there's no platforming in this stage. It's one of only three levels in the game without doors. One of them was the level where we fought Galleon for a second time, the third one we're yet to do, but yet yeah, that was the whole stage. We don't even get a cutscene to close it off, so you're guaranteed to get 100% in that level. So we're moving on to the battleship Harbin Interior, and you can see that the Great Fox survived its battle with the Harbin. Not very well, it's smoking and all that, but Snake is introduced, and I'll be quiet. Yeah, Brawl has some dialogue in it. Yeah, a proper sentence. That's something to brag about. That's, if you count PK Thunder and Ness's PK moves, then there's been a few before, but that's the first proper sentence and only proper sentence. Using the Cypher helps you. So if it, we just walk straight through that gunfire. Don't ask me to explain how that happened. But anyways, down here, there's a very easy to miss uh, door. Behind this drop block, there's a switch. You want to hit that, which I'm not sure how I did, but I did hit it somehow. And that leads us to a very missable secret area with a blue cube and an orange cube. So let's see what's inside the orange one. I have no idea what that is. I think it's from that Japanese robot game. It sounds very appealing to me. So we'll climb up the ladder and there's lots of primids here so I'm just going to try and use the cypher to go over them. There is nothing down there except for death and a pit. Not the pit that we were just using, but we have a cutscene here. Snake decides to randomly hide behind a wall. Basically his thought process, a wall! I'm a character from a stealth game so I've got to hide behind it. But Lucario saw that box and he's going to use the power of the aura to see what's inside it. And he saw Snake, who then initiates quite the reference. Meta Knight challenges him, but Lucario saw that Snake's aura was blue, meaning it's good. 
so Lucario knows Snake's a good guy, and by seeing the red aura on the Primids, you can also see that they're bad. Now, I haven't used Lucario yet, but I'm going to avoid him for now, and I'll show him off uh, later on in this level. So this is a fairly unique section. We got to go to three different corners of this area and defeat an enemy spawner in the middle of it. They all spawn different enemies. This one in particular spawns some Phytans. There'll also be an infinite... I think it's an infinite supply of Armites. Okay, there's just two of them. But anyways, once you've beaten an any enemy spawner, a switch will appear at the top of the area. You want to hit that and carry on with your wonderful journey. Now, this is the most challenging spawner because it will make flows appear. But just go with the flow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is the pun episode now. And there's also a simul there which will go out of its way to cause you difficulty. But hit that switch. But don't go back to the main area yet. We've instead got yet another very well hidden secret. This really is just the level for well hidden secrets. You go into a very sloped area. Not sure what's going on with this slope. And this also has an enemy spawner in it. Now you don't need to beat this one to um, complete the level. This doesn't make any sort of siren go off. But I recommend coming here just to get 100% on the level. Don't blame me, please. Those guys have been real problems. I didn't have much damage coming into here and they've almost taken me out. Blue tag's been quite troublesome. But there's an orange cube with a single sticker in it. Thanks, game, for that single sticker. I really appreciate it. Well, I do appreciate it, in fairness, but... Anyway, back through the door, and we're heading back to more of the main area. So, something I'd like to say about this level, considering we're using, like, Snake and Lucario, and it's just this dark old ship with lots of furnaces in the background, you wouldn't really think of it as a Kirby stage, but because it is the Battleship Harbour, Meta Knight's ship, it does count as a Kirby stage, and that's a complaint I've had with Brawl in general. While I'm talking about regular Brawls now, in regular Brawls, while the stage Green Greens does come back from melee, which is your more typical happy Kirby stage, because it's a melee stage, you won't see it in one player mode. And it is a non-original stage, technically. There's only one original Kirby stage in Brawl, and that's the Halberd. And while it suits Meta Knight, also we were hitting those switches to make platforms disappear from here. But yeah, while it fits Meta Knight, it doesn't fit Kirby and King Dedede at all, in my opinion. So I really think Brawl should have had a more normal, happy Kirby stage. But it doesn't, instead it's just the harbour. And yeah, as I said, you don't play in green greens in one player mode and the like, so I don't count that one player mode referring to like classic mode and all stars mode. I wish you could play melee stages in classic mode and all star mode because that would make it a whole lot easier to beat Ness and Lucas. When you fight Ness and Lucas in Classic and All-Star mode, you have to do it in the massive New Fork City. If we were just allowed melee stages, then half of the time we could be doing it in 1F instead, where it wouldn't take so unbelievably long. But never mind, this is actually a fairly challenging ambush, but that Super Mushroom came at a helpful time. And then the Auto Lance just fell off and died, just like the Ice Climbers. So now we're going to use Lucario. And I suppose I'd better explain Lucario's key gimmick. Well, I will do once I've... Oh, no, we're not in the next proper area yet. Well, we are in the next proper area, just not the pro next gimmicky area. Also, scope primids can fire upwards now. I don't think they could do that before. But anyways, talk about Lucario's gimmick now. Now, Lucario is a very unique character for Brawl because his attacks, to start off with, won't do much damage. But because of his aura, the more damage Lucario takes, uh, the more damage he will deal to his opponents and all, the more knockback his attacks will have, therefore. So, in a way, taking damage can help him 
while in a regular brawl you'd still probably try and take as little damage as possible. In the subspace emissary it does really help because you naturally get up to some pretty high amounts of damage from all the enemies bombarding you. And so Lucario can just uh, take some damage and then he'll be able to beat them quicker. So anyways, now we're in the next gimmicky area. Every time you beat an enemy here, one of these blue platforms will go down. You can see that one drop just there. We want to go around this area and beat every enemy that's there. That blue cube will always have a Starman in it, and the Starman's very useful for beating that Nanagog. And also an enemy up here. I'm avoiding that Max and Tomato and coming back to it later. Oh, I didn't manage to keep the Starman going long enough. But I can still beat that Metal Primage with relative ease. Jump over those spikes. Meta Knight, why did you put spikes there? Oh, the Max and Tomato's gone. Damn. Uh, we can't hit that Simul with projectiles, so I don't know why I was charging an Aura Sphere there. The Simul's generally one of the more challenging enemies in this area because obviously they're very hard to approach. You can't hit them with projectiles and they'll just start attacking when you come near them. There's also a fairly difficult Tau Tau as well. They can obviously do some pain, deal some pain to you. Looks like you can go through there, but you can't. But if Lucario's got enough damage, he can take them out very easily with a down air. So we've beaten all the enemies in the room, so now we can head to that door. If you'd stop grabbing the ladder. There, we've gone through the door. And now we see a room. But first person view for the second time in the game. Oh, Brawl, your direction. It makes me so happy. But here we got trophies of Princess Peach. Well, a trophy of Princess Peach, which is being surrounded by happy beads. So I think you can guess what's going to happen here. The shadow bugs are going to form into a dark version of Princess Peach. And for the second time in the game, we're also going to see Dark Zelda. This cutscene doesn't change depending on which princess you save, you just see Peach first. And while I could give Lucario some more screen time, and I know Meta Knight's had quite a lot, Meta Knight does make this battle probably the easiest. I'm not that good with Lucario myself, and I'm not very good with Snake either. Meta Knight I'm passively skillful with. And in a nice rounded stage like this where you can't fall off, Meta Knight is especially helpful. Now I'm going to act like a pro Meta Knight here and just do nothing but spam Max Tornado. It saddens me, but that pretty much is the way to play Meta Knight. Just spam Max, Max Tornado to rack up some damage, occasionally using some uh, more potent attacks, and we got, I got stunned by a Deku Nut there. But anyway, so... Peach and Zelda are obviously on the same team, so they can't hurt each other, so it's fairly, it's fairly difficult, really. In my previous recording, yes, I did a previous recording of this episode as well. I managed to beat it without dying, just 66% damage, but I'm not going to get that lucky this time. So let's see if Snake can do any better. Clearly not, he's doing poorly. Zelda nearly gone there. Can we at least get rid of Peach? No, I, no, I'm putting on a poor show here. God, I did much better last time. Come on. There, that gets rid of Peach. Now can we lose Zelda? Go for a throw. That got rid of her. There, and a ve that dash attack covers so much distance. I do like Snake's uh, dash attack. But slash! The chains are broken, and now we get the real princesses back. But after reviving them, we don't take them with us, we instead just tell them to stay there and close the door on them. Which I don't really understand, but alright. Stage clear! Yo, Pikmin! HM Mech Rosa, that's what the trophy was. Dark Samus Tingle, Luigi's Mansion Salsa, Fairy 18 Volt, Excite Bike, Donkey Kong, Balloon Fight, Enemy, Rakensen, Toadsworth, Jill, Drill Dozer, and SMALLAX! Why did I bother reading that? Yeah, so that's a level which is very commonly not 100%ed, but I did 100% it, yay! In the next episode we'll be going to the Battleship Harbored Exterior. See you then.